This is former Indiana basketball player Brian Evans, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Everybody circling this vulture negative, nepotism. Everybody waiting for the father main. Everybody praying. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, of course, on this Friday at August 14th. Joined now by Dana Bimbo from Indianapolis Star. Happy to have her along again. Thank you so much for joining us, Dana. Yeah, thanks for having Oh, always a pleasure, uh, Todd, here with us as well. Uh, so how have you been spending your uh, quarantine time? Not quarantine time, but just uh, the pandemic time. It's uh, certainly been a life-changing uh, deal for all of us. Yeah, like, well, at first they pulled some of the sports writers off uh, sports, obviously, in the beginning because there were none. And uh, so I ended up covering the story of Chase and Sadie. I don't know if you guys have been following it, but he was like a – elite swimmer he's 19 he found out he had three to five months to live and his high school sweetheart and him got married their senior year in april um and so he's uh past three months and so he's kind of sick right he's pretty sick right now but um he got to find his love of his life and it's kind of been a touching story to follow that's that's what i did in the early part Dana, I read that article. It was, it's a tearjerker. Like, I don't know if that's what you were going for, but man, it was, uh, what a story that was and, or is, I should have guess I shouldn't say it in past tense. That's an unbelievable story. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it, it is a sports story. I mean, I know you said they took you off sports, but I mean, it's, it's a sports related story. And, and I have, uh, I have enjoyed continuing to follow, uh, you know, even after that one, I, I read the Arch Leister story that you just had come out and, and, there's just a lot of really interesting stuff for you to cover right now, but it's it's not actual games, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so I was set to go visit our Schleister, you know, the so he was the for like young people who may not know, he was the number four, you know, overall NFL draft pick in eighty two when the Colts were still in Baltimore. And he was this great player at Ohio State and quarterback and expected to be this amazing NFL star. And so uh, he's now in federal prison. He's been, in the past 40 years, he's been in 60 different prisons and jails due to his gambling. And How so, many? Um, 60. Six zero. So between all the jails and prisons he's been in, he's been in 60. And he's had two 10-year federal sentences, and he's getting ready to finish his second federal sentence. And so he's 60 years old now, has Parkinson's and dementia, and he agreed, like, in January, we started corresponding via email, and he said I could come out to Colorado, visit him in prison, and I was going to do a big piece as he was said to be released, but then, of course, COVID happened, and they weren't allowing visitors, so we did all of our interview by email, and he's this, he's, fa- I mean, he's fascinating, he's very sick. He's still gambling in prison. In fact, as we were emailing, he got disciplined and couldn't write me because he was telling people in prison that he had Super Bowl tickets and they were getting their family members to send him money and he has no Super Bowl tickets. Um, But then he was having women outside the bars play sets for him with that money that he was getting from people in prison. So... I went to Ohio last week where there was some court hearings and the judge was like, they were trying to, you know, get him out of prison early. His attorneys were, and the judge was like, no, this guy's in prison, still gambling, still like swindling people. So, and he's just, he's insanely addicted. That's just a, uh, it's just a heartbreaking story because you can tell the guy is just, uh, he can't control himself, and and if you are someone who does remember that name, I do. I mean, that especially that was in my childhood, my teenage years. I mean, that was one of those guys, those big time people you looked up to, and it's just it's so sad to hear that, and 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 knowing that uh, after all this time, that if he he could do anything, that he would, uh, if he could do it differently. So obviously, you can tell it's it's just a sad, sad story for him. So did did you actually get to communicate? You said you were emailing, like you, were you guys actually corresponding back and forth? 
Oh, yeah, we corresponded for, like, three months, and then um, he got banned, and then he corresponded a little bit more when he got his email back, and then I wrote a story um, about him gambling in prison, because in my research, I found that out, I found the hearing was going to happen, and when I wrote that story, I got a letter from the prison, and it said, Arch Leister has banned you from talking to him again or whatever like he wasn't going to receive any more stuff from me so he was upset that I guess that I had written that but the prosecutor told me that he read all of his prison emails and that after I wrote that story he was telling people that he had been hoping he could get me to play best for him so like he was being really nice when he was talking to me in the email he never asked me to play for that but the, the prosecutor said that was his intention was to try to see what he could, you know, get out of me. Crazy. I mean, when, when you, like, I remember reading the story, and I don't want to lump them together, but just they're both football players. So when you read the story about Ryan Leaf and guys that have have been in that situation, like the uh, Ryan Leaf, I, I, I think, blamed most everything on being addicted to drugs and being, you know, he did, he stole money to get drugs. Did Arch Leister say any of that kind of stuff, or was it all just gambling addiction? No, he now he specifically wrote to me about tragedies in his life, and so I read all of his books as well before I wrote the article. Um, and he did have some tragedy, like when he his dad owned this huge farm in Ohio, and uh, when he was a little boy, he was out playing, and he walked in, and one of the farm hands was hanging, hanging like from the barn like he had hung himself and so Art said that that never got out of his mind and then um, he had a severe, like he almost died from a fire. His brother and him were mixing gas with flames or something and he had severe burns and he didn't think he was going to make it and in the hospital, I think he was about 12 years old maybe, um, he told his dad, you know, I just want to die because the pain was so bad and so I talked to his psychiatrist who said that he definitely had tragedy in his life, and a lot of times, you know, that can cause an addiction like that. But his wife, I don't know if you heard this story, but she told us that, or his ex-wife, when she was pregnant with their first daughter in the hospital, she took off her jewelry and laid it aside um, and was, like, getting ready to give birth. And he took her wedding ring, Schleister did, and, like, left the hospital, pawned it, to get money, placed bed, and then came back for the birth of their daughter. So he's <laughs> really, really, really sick. I mean, it's, it's just crazy that he's still doing it from prison, you know? Well, that yeah, shows you the sickness. It, it, I, I'm it, just uh, sitting here shaking my head half the time. I chuckled. You. I chuckled, and then I thought, "Wait a minute, this is this is not funny." Like I'm not chuckling because it's funny. I I was thinking about what your wife is like when she's giving birth, and and the the craziness that's going through her mind at that point. I can I can only imagine what he brought upon himself with that. That's just that's crazy. Yeah, I mean you Sorry, you hear yeah. these kind of stories, but you never think that they can really be real. And, and, but this, the sickness that it has to overcome and, but then you got to feel for the family. Cause you just mentioned the wife and there's kids. And that's the sad part of this. Well, his dad ultimately ended up taking his life by suicide in 2000. I can't remember which year it was a decade, more than a decade ago, because he had been like, they had been like, giving their life savings to try to just legal fees with him and trying to get him, you know, treatment. And his dad finally um, wrote, like, wrote a note in Ohio and jumped into the pool they had on the deep end. I guess he doesn't even know how to swim, and he drowned himself. And he was just like, he had, I mean, he had done everything he could for his son. And, it's, I mean, it's a tr it really is a tragic story. He, it's very tragic. But then again, you think, I mean, I guess the guy I talked to said, like, less than 3% of compulsive gamblers ever actually recover, unlike alcoholism or, you know, drug use. You, you get a lot of recoveries and people stick to the, stick to being sober. It's very hard for a compulsive gambler to ever recover, and I'm not sure exactly why. 
I'm thinking maybe- I read I read I read the article about the seven hundred thousand dollar settlement he got from the NFL over the CTE um, you know issues and like is that is that a is that a settlement he got a long time ago? Is that sitting in his bank account when he gets out? Like, because you know that that'll get gambled the second he gets out of there if this is the case. Yeah, the the prosecutor in Franklin County, Ohio, is awesome. He's he's got to be close to eight. I mean, he's been doing this a long time, and so he he just thinks Schleister should get nothing. So he filed motions to have that money go to his victims versus him when he gets out of prison so yeah it's sitting somewhere uh a court just ruled that over a million or let me think 150,000 of it goes to um one of Schleister's victims Anita Barney who then has to pay her victims because Anita Barney was the widow of a Wendy's fast food restaurant CEO he was the CEO of Wendy's and she was his widow or ex-wife I can't remember and Schleister knew she had money so he started having her play best for him um and this was years ago and then once she did that he started having her get her friends to get her money so she ended up being a the major accomplice of our Schleister and so the money from the seven hundred thousand dollars that was supposed to go to her a poor rule she gets it as a victim but then she has to pay it out to her victim so it's like, and so he has a 500 some left, but I think my guess is that those are going to be spread among his, you know, hundreds of people he swindled. I was when shocked more by the $700,000 amount he got from the NFL. I mean, that's, that's a big amount. Oh, and that's what I'm, I need to look into that because I was like, yeah. I mean, maybe is it due to his dementia that he's claiming it's from CTE? I mean, I don't know how that all works. Like, how do they decide who gets what? Right. I don't even know. Well, you know things are bad when your victims have victims. When your victims, yeah. I'm like, wow. I have been obsessed with this story. I'm just like, I cannot believe... You know, like when the NFL banned him, he was in Baltimore. The NFL banned him, Commissioner Roselle at the time, and said, like, this guy's sick, he's out. Because he had gotten drafted by the Baltimore Colts, and the first thing he did, I guess, was look up all the Baltimore bookies and started placing bets in Baltimore. And when he was banned, um, he got sent to a treatment facility in New York. And while there, and this was inpatient, required, can't leave. While there, his mentor that I talked to said he was sitting there visiting him, and a limo pulls up, and they're like, yeah, Schleister needs to go work out. And he was like, what? You don't get to leave the treatment facility. And they're like, yeah, somehow he got where a limo comes and picks him up every day, and he goes and works out. And so the mentor was like, you just can see how no matter what avenue in his life, he could get people to do, you know, what he needed to have done for him. Yeah, that's the um, remarkable thing. Uh, people think that, and they are, they're sick, but they're also geniuses a lot of times. The, the, the mental capacity is mind-boggling that they are able to get done, like you just talked about. He had a wife. I mean, he had, he's had, and he continues to get people to do things or, or gets close to it. That, that's, that takes some genius. And there's a lot of intelligence in there. Yeah. He's incredible. So he's set to be released in like nine months from Ohio prison. They're going to transfer him from Colorado this month to finish out his state sentence. And so I guess I'll keep following, you know, what ends up happening with him. Um, But yeah, that's been my big, big chunk of time. Of course, now it's like 500 stuff. So... What are you guys? Are you guys having like a big watch party for the five hundred? What do you? Yep, yep. Uh, everyone, everyone's invited. We're getting. We're planning <laughs> on having hundreds of people. No masks allowed. Yeah, we're we're gonna have yeah. a big blowout. <laughs> Yeah, we're just hoping for something to sports just every day. We're just like, okay, what are we gonna do today? Uh, but no, I'm looking forward to it. Are you gonna? Are you going to the race? Yeah, I'm doing a piece on uh, what it's like being there without fans, I guess. Like, so I'll be like inside and just, I guess, what it's 
kind of just a feature type piece on what it's like being there without fans. So that's my assignment. Before that, I, I put a call out for people whose streaks have been broken. I cannot believe the stories I'm getting in of these people and their streaks of going to the Indy 500. Um, the longest one right now is 75 years. This Holy cow. Going. I know. Another one is a woman who, I think it was 12 years, but two of the years she came while undergoing radiation treatment for breast cancer and was really, really sick, but she didn't want to break her streak. And so that's a cool story. Um, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff coming out. I've gotten like 300 responses, and I'm gonna have a hard time picking. But is, is there like I guess this is just the soft side of me wondering like is there any way Roger Penske or anybody comes up with that? I mean I guess people would just start making stories up if that was the case. But is there any way they get like special passes for people that can prove they've been to the race for 75 years in a row? I know, because you know what? That is a great idea. Because the guy who's been, one of the guys who's been like 67 in a row, he sent me a picture, and he has these boards with every single ticket. So he saved every single ticket, so he can definitely prove it. And Man. I'm sure there's other people like that. Let's start a campaign. Get that done. You got the, the, that place is if so you, massively if you can big. Prove you've been to, if you can prove you've been to more than twenty five in a row, just send your information in, and Dana will get you a ticket. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> there you go, Dana. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. That is a good idea, though, for the person who's the longest running. Like, let that person and like four or five family members come watch the race. Man, looking forward to it. Looking forward to the race, too. Dana, I cannot thank you enough. The story is riveting. Make sure you follow her at the Indianapolis Star because she's got nothing but great content. Uh, we look forward to the end story. We'll look forward to following up to see if you can get anything done for those special ticket people. That would be awesome. <laughs> now the pressure's on you. Now you have the pressure on you. You thought you had an easy Friday. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, well, you guys have a good weekend. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com.